Hello fellow 3D enthusiast. So in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how box cutter and decal machine work together. And they actually do work quite well together. Box cutter is known for being pretty high poly and decal machine is very low poly. And mixing them together, you can get something that looks fairly high poly without having a whole lot of vertices going on. So yeah, that's really cool. And I'm going to show you how you can use them to work together. But before we go on, Real quick, I'd like to mention that I've created a completely free hydraulic kit bash element pack for you. So these work best with Blender, and there's a link for them in the description. My main concern when I started using decal machine was that to call up the main pie menu for it, you hit D. And if you've ever used box cutter, you know that's also pretty important for box cutter. That's got a very major pie menu there. That turned out not to be a problem at all because they actually come up in different situations. So when you're just in the normal version of Blender not using box cutter, when you don't have the box cutter mode enabled, when you hit D, that will call up the decal machine pie menu. And once you actually go into box cutter mode, when you hit D, that's when you get this menu. So that's not really a problem. And now I'm going to show you how you can make your own custom decals using both box cutter and decal machine. So as I mentioned in the last tutorial, it's generally a good idea to start out with a plane when you're creating your own decals. So I'm just going to scale this up a little bit on the x-axis, get a little bit of an oblong look, and hop into edit mode. Another useful thing for setting up decals is to sort of have a flat rim around your decal. So I'm going to inset it here, just so I have that rim going on. And I'm going to even that out there. So a look I kind of want to go for is I want it to sort of ramp up before sinking down. So I'm going to inset once more, grab that, move it up a tiny bit, maybe not quite that much. There we go, that'll be good. And then inset once more, and then extrude it downwards. So I kind of like the way this is looking. Now I'm just going to bevel this outside edge so it's not as sharp. And when you're making your own decals, I, I really like to go crazy with the bevel just because that will catch the light quite a bit better than if we just have flat edges. Okay, so I'm going to create what's called a subset decal, and that is a decal that has multiple parts. This is just one object right here, but I'm going to put in some details down in the bottom here with box cutter. So I'm going to start out with a cube, pretty basic and just sort of fill that in and get some different levels of detail going on. And a lot of this is up to preference, so that's why I'm not going to talk too much during it, just sort of time lapse through. And I'm using hard ops a bit to mirror things and smooth them out eventually as well, just so you're aware. Okay, so I've got all these objects here. I'm just going to make sure all of my modifiers are applied, and then I'm going to merge them into one object, except for this plane. I'm going to make sure that's a different object. Okay, so it's all one object. I'm going to make sure I go out of box cutter mode into normal Blender stuff. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that the origin of both of these objects is the outer layer of this object here. So I'm going to select this with Alt and left click and go, let's see, Shift S, cursor to selected, make sure the cursor is in the middle there. And then I'm going to right click, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. And I'm going to do the same with this, origin to 3D cursor. Now they're both zeroed out on the plane. All right, so I'm going to select this and select my big one and hit create subset decal. Cross your fingers, and hey look, that's pretty cool. So now we have it in our instant decals. If you want, you can load it into your library, but first I'm gonna test it out just to see. So I'm gonna grab this guy and hit control just to snap it to this nice cube over here. It's looking pretty good. 
I'm going to scale it down a little bit, hit D, reapply, and that will set the secondary object that we had, the bigger one, to be the same material, and it's going to have the same normal and everything like that, so that's really cool. And you can see we've got our secondary objects in here working pretty nicely. Now, I like where this is. Actually, I don't like where it is. I'm going to move it over on the Y, make sure that one's over there. Cool, we got two now. And I'm just going to hit D and project. And it's sticking to our cube rather nicely. Dang, that's actually one of the better decals I've made. Although, you can see it's clipping a little bit here. So, hit D, adjust, and that's better. And once again, if you hit D and hit adjust, and then do E, well, first let's hit X to <laughs> undo all that change I just made. E will actually set the depth, and you can see it's working on that other one over there too. That's cool. I like it around here, I'd say. Nice. So those are all set. That's how you make decals with box cutter and decal machine. I hope you found this useful. Make sure and drop a like and subscribe if you would like to see more like this. Cheers!